being greedy ends up costing you in the long run. I've done it again, guys. I've turned this polytunnel into a jungle and it's too much. I've done it wrong. I've done it wrong. I need to get better at this. I seem to make the same mistakes year on year in this polytunnel. Uh, or I'll go through them now with you and try and make myself a bit better gardener. First thing is I had a major overhaul in this polytunnel. I decided that however having a middle bed, I just have two wider beds on the side and I'd concentrate on growing two different crops. I'd have um, tomatoes and things on the one side and cucumbers and stuff on the other. And they're not meant to grow them together, but you know, it's having space to do these things. What happened was that I started to space out my tomatoes and I got carried away every time um i thought well, when you put them in never looks very close does it did them about 18 inches apart but i decided that rather than just having them one row i could stagger them the trouble was then i couldn't get to the back uh ones to prune them properly and it just became really tight and awkward and starts getting overgrown go on holiday for a week it gets more overgrown you come back uh you still got tomatoes they're still ripening but it's just then becomes a massive undertaking and i'd prune them come in in the evening and prune them in the heat and uh, it just became this kind of, you know, this hard job to do. Uh, the other side, I put my cucumbers in. None of them come up. Um, I don't know whether something ate them. I tried to start some modules inside the polytunnel. I just had a really bad year of cucumbers. My acachoas come up. These, these little things take some stopping. I tell you, they came up. They've come up fine. Um, and I also put some winter squash in. The winter squash did really, really well. They crop really heavily in here, give them a nice long season. And then I've had mice or rats chew through the middle of every single one of them and ruin my crop, which has really been disappointing. I've also had loads of tomatoes eaten, uh, which has not been great. One of the kind of negatives, last year we got blight and it wiped out the whole greenhouse. So this year I've been really careful of it. And I grew a lot of blight resistant tomatoes, Crimson Crush and uh, some other ones like that. Yes, they've cropped really well. No, we haven't got blight and they're still cropping now, you know, getting towards the end of October now, still cropping really well. They aren't as tasty as some of the heritage varieties that I've grown in the past. So I think next year, okay, I'll do a lot of blight tomatoes, blight resistant tomatoes as well, but I need to have a bit of a better mix than what I've got this year. I got a bit kind of carried away with all the blight resistant ones and the seeds are expensive. They don't taste as good, but it does mean that I'm kind of guaranteed a crop and I don't need to worry quite so much about blight. Yeah, I'd like some nice big beefsteak tomatoes, some more paste tomatoes, um, lots more cherry tomatoes. The black cherry tomatoes I grow every year, they're not blight resistant, but they are delicious. They're really, really good and they've grown really well. And actually, I've been looking out for those ones on top rather than some of the blight resistant ones. Although these guys cook lovely, uh, cooking lots of tomato soups and stuff. And I think looking in here, we've probably got about a bucket full ready to, to go now. So I have done some changes as well as doing the path. I put in some wire supports across the top because um, it just wasn't enough to have uh, string and stuff. It just sagged too much. I mean, to be honest with you, you can see here probably that the wire is um, sagging as well with the weight of those acachoas on them and how much they're climbing onto them. And I've also, I also had a water system in here, um, both sides on a different timer. So one side could have more water than the other, make sure neither were on at the same time. Run underneath black plastic, I kind of weed mulched it really well. And I've still got weeds coming up in the holes. I mean, it is just too overgrown in here. So it's very good showing you my problems. What am I gonna do about them? So next year, I am gonna plant my tomatoes further apart. When I'm planting my tomatoes, please remind me to plant them further apart. I am not gonna try and squeeze so much in. Being greedy ends up costing you in the long run. I'm going to put my tomatoes further apart. I'm going to put my courgettes further apart. I'm going to start them in modules. I'm going to get some decent compost and make sure they start and they, they come really well. And I'm going to start them earlier as well. Um, and I'm going to try and have a couple of waves of cucumbers. We've really missed them this year. I'm going to make sure that I mulch and fertilize the ground as well as I did this year. Create more of my own compost. I'm going to keep on top of the pruning. Although it's the end of the season, I've actually bought myself some new pruning shears. I saw these the other day and I thought, oh, these look, these look the proper job. So these you kind of just keep on your feet. So you can use both hands and then you can just snip, snip, snip. Um, rather than I was using some big shears before and you end up putting them down or putting them in your pocket, quite dangerous. So I thought, try these little Japanese pruning shears should be ideal I thought it might make me more inclined to kind of keep on pruning them when they're a bit smaller as well don't leave them to get so big and then to prune them and then you're pulling them out and knocking fruit off and everything else and it can become a bit of a nightmare um so that's my plan on kind of trying to get the polytunnel to to crop a bit better um to be a bit of a place that i want to spend more time rather than coming in here and thinking oh god what have i done you know 
Right, I want to know what mistakes you've made when you've been using the polytunnel. Um, please tell me. Come on, tell me that I'm not alone here. And tell me what you've done wrong in your polytunnel.